welcome to the special 8 News Now presentation, Trafficked No More. It's an unflinching look at the business of sex trafficking, who's behind it, how they recruit their victims, and why everyone should be concerned. We hope this documentary will spark a conversation about what each of us can do to stop the exploitation. We hope you'll join the conversation on Facebook and Twitter. This documentary will be presented uncut and commercial free. Your discretion is advised. And now, Trafficked No More. The state of Nevada will never be better than the state of its children. The Children's Advocacy Alliance is proud to support Trafficked No More. Please watch to see how you can be part of the solution to help protect our children. Hope Christian Health Center is humbled to stand with the community regarding this very important cause. It is up to all of us to make a difference. My name is Anna, and my story is true. I remember the year I turned 17 like it was yesterday. I was living with my mom. My dad, he left us before I was 10. I spent a lot of time on YouTube and had just passed 500 friends on my Facebook. My mom worked two jobs to support us, so I basically took care of myself. And I was in love that year. I didn't realize how lonely I was before I met him or how good it would feel when he told me how beautiful I was. I had a lot to look forward to that year. My entire life lay ahead. Instead, I was trafficked and exploited into prostitution. I became a human slave not in some foreign country, but right here in America. I saw a lot of bad stuff when I was in Thailand. Children being sold out literally on the streets in front of people. I thought to myself, I'm so glad I live in a country where we would never think to buy or sell our children. And then um, I came home for school, started working um, as a social worker and um, got involved with the FBI and got my position here and they asked me to come to Reno. So that was the first time that I saw our children um, being bought and sold in our hotels and on our street by our men. It's the exploitation of human beings in what's known as modern day slavery. It's not about sex. It's about children who have been abused, abandoned, suffered horrific childhoods. Do not believe that this is an issue that only involves children from disadvantaged and chaotic homes. Do not believe that this is something that couldn't happen to you or to your kids. The kids that we see trafficked are your neighbors, are their kids that go to school with your own children. They are local kids. He prostituted her. He, he pandered her. He, was, he sex trafficked her. Whichever term you want to use, he sold her. Um, and he stole her from us. Sex trafficking in Las Vegas um, under the umbrella of prostitution uh, is flourishing. What we do find is that the majority of, of uh, women and of men that are in prostitution start as youth and a lot of our research is showing throughout North America that the average age of entry is between 12 and 14. They're starting as children or as, uh, as very young adults. I will tell you, when I was an assistant county manager here in Clark County, I worked very closely with the juvenile justice uh, services and at that time and that was in uh, I want to say early 2000 saw a number of kids coming through the juvenile justice system that were brought through the system because they were on the streets they were prostitutes arrested as prostitutes not realizing at the time that there's more to the story we've had uh, girls here in the Reno area the youngest one I think we've had uh, would be 12 um, but we've had um, a couple months ago, we had a girl that was on that was 14. Uh, she obviously was getting help um, from somebody else to post those ads. The kids may be coming in because they're being arrested, but they're victims. They're being exploited by somebody else 
uh, who was really controlling them. Across the country, we're seeing a movement with gangs moving into the sex trafficking arena because for them, historically, they've been involved in drug trafficking. Well, you can only sell a dime bag once, but you can sell a girl over and over and over again. It's an unlimited commodity for them. At first, everything was free. They said it was just for being pretty. That made me feel really special. Life became a whirlwind. Fitting in was important to me. Before I knew it, I was in over my head. Soon I was getting yelled at a lot for being out all the time. There were no A's on my report card or B's or C's for that matter. I just didn't care about school anymore. So I dropped out. My mom didn't want me around the house anymore. So I left. Nothing was free anymore. To keep up the habit, we started selling small things first, then clothes. Eventually, my little car. Then my boyfriend got arrested for stealing. He wasn't getting out anytime soon. That week, I found out I was pregnant. You gotta look at the motivations of those who traffic the victims. Young means vulnerabilities. You look at children and they go through psychological and physiological development. It is much easier to victimize a young girl for sex trafficking. They don't have a structured family. They may be, uh, the, the mom is working a lot and there is no supervision in the home. There is not that attention that they need. The reality is of all the girls that I have spoken with, all the girls that we have rescued from this lifestyle, that has been the reoccurring theme. They're looking to fill a void and usually that void is the missing father, the missing mother, the lack of love. If they don't find it at home, children will seek a family. If you think of any teenage girl, what do they want? They want to be loved, they want to be pretty, they want people to think well of them, they have self-esteem that they need to have bolstered. What we see is children who've had their sexual boundaries violated at an early age, who are running away, who don't feel loved, that really sets them up for being drawn to these adults who offer them this sort of illusion of safety and love. And then you have this person coming towards you with all these nice things to say or buying you things and, and trying to do for you. Of course, you're gonna let your guard down and start trusting them. Pregnant and broke. I didn't know what I was going to do. Then he showed up. He told me he was going to take care of me, us, until I got it together. He did take care of me for a minute, and I was so thankful. That's when it began. He raped me. I was on my way out the door when he told me about the pictures. He said, if I left, he'd put them online so my 500 friends could see. I got sick to my stomach. He took my ID and my phone and said he'd kill my mom. <laughs> that night, he made me be with some of his friends. <laughs> that weekend, he tattooed me and started sending me out at night. There are stages of the game. At the beginning, it's going to be the recruitment process. Go to the roller rink. 
there's pimps there. Go to the school playground, there's pimps there. Walking home from school, these men will drive up in their cars and say, hey, pretty girl, you want a ride? Scoping out when these young children are ditching school, they go to the neighborhood restaurants. They're at the clothing exchange, they're at the Greyhound stations. When a kid runs away um, and ends up in a new city, the pimps are standing there waiting, looking for someone who looks like they don't have a place to stay. And this is one of the best places they recruit, I believe, is the malls. Young people, they love to put their whole lives out on the internet. We always want to caution parents. If their children are going on to the computer, uh, they need to be aware of what they're looking at. Uh, these victims, uh, you know, oftentimes uh, are put in situations where they're abused mentally, physically, assaults from batteries, all the way to rapes. They could go as far as kidnapping and murder. So victims in these situations are exposed to tremendous harm that, you know, oftentimes uh, is something that they may never recover from. Having the internet access at night um, is as good, in my opinion, as keeping your door unlocked, having a neon sign to your children's room saying, come get my kid. Many times in those initial uh, encounters, it's flattery, it's um, deceit, but it's all the things that young kids are looking for, and it's acceptance. We did not understand how strong the um, manipulation and the grooming process can be. They will always try to gain their trust and form a relationship of some sort, whether it's a friendship or something romantic. These pimps steal the, um, the position of caretaker and nurturer away from families. That is that is the whole game. They're gonna groom you. They're gonna um, make sure that you fell in love with me, that you love me. That when I ask you to do something, you're gonna be so mad in love with me that you're gonna do it. She felt like she fell in love with him and that he was the only one who understood her. It graduates to, let's go out of town, let's go visit Reno, we'll have a great weekend. They say you don't have to have sex, you don't have to do anything that you don't want to do. That's not true at all. And then when they get to Reno, it turns into, oh, I don't have any money. You're going to need to go do these acts to help us survive. And it'll only be one time, maybe twice. And then ultimately, once that girl has engaged in that behavior, then it becomes expected. And when they don't do what that exploiter wants, then they're subject to physical abuse. And then he becomes their one resource and that's when they'll do whatever he wants and if they don't you'll punish them but there's no way home. Keep been working and to make sure that you and your mom and your family are falling apart because what they want is to isolate you so, so you don't have no one to call and to say, hey, I'm here, can you help me, please? The typical warning signs are children who start to skip school. Their grades might start uh, going down. They've got more than one cell phone. They can't explain where they got a different cell phone. Your daughter starts coming home with her nails and her hair done, and you aren't paying for it. Shoes or pants or some type of clothing that you are not purchasing. Terminology, like the game. If you see things like being on a team, if you see the salutations going back and forth of hubby and wifey, um, those are real words that are used in this world of sex trafficking. If she's got a new boyfriend that she's being secretive about or that appears older than he's claiming to be. Usually showing up with tattoos that the trafficker has put on them. Being tired, attitude changing, if your daughter never talked back to you before. Changing her language. She's vulgar, nasty, abusive language that she didn't learn from us. Running away maybe during the weekends only. Coming home with money, uh, a big wad of money. Money don't grow in the trees, so most likely somebody's giving them the money and nothing is free nowadays, right? You're gonna have to give a service for the money. She gets up at night because that's where most of her clients are buying her time. And she jumps in the shower and she puts her makeup on and she dresses really cute. She covers up her bruises because a couple nights ago or a week ago or even that night, she was beat by her pimp or she was slapped or choked by her trick, her John, and she's got to cover up the bruises of the physical abuse. 
And what a lot of people don't realize too is when these girls are going out, when I went out to work myself, is we have to set our mind to work. And you start to pop a pill. And you do a line, line of cocaine, line of crystal meth. You do a line of whatever it is, uh, heroin. And because you need to be mentally prepared for 10 to 20 to 30 different men to grope you and to have sex with you, to do sexual acts to you. And many, uh, maybe a handful, maybe five of them will be very aggressive and rape you. This is an issue that we will never combat unless we deal with both sides of the equation. This is simple economics. You have a supply side, you have a demand side. As long as there are men that are willing to pay for sex with children, we will have an issue with sex trafficking in this area. I guess the thing that surprises me the most is, you know, you expect your, your typical uh, like semi-transient or construction worker types, but we've actually gotten some people who've made very decent money who had high profile jobs come in here and um, that ended up surprising me a lot is just how many of these people who have everything going for them at home and so much money and they're out here looking for this kind of thing. Is to pay for street level prostitution, they are funneling a market for black market slavery. All I could think of was saving my daughter. <laughs> yeah. I was pregnant with a girl. You have to understand. I want to leave. But I'm afraid he'll hurt my family. <laughs> I didn't want to die alone. <laughs> I had the courage to start over. Some of the tactics that the pimps use are really akin to torture. I mean, they're waterboarding, they're tormenting, they're doing incredible levels of physical harm. Many of our kids I have found have had forced abortions or um, miscarriages from being beaten. And remember, place that in context of 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 years old. The women who don't, um, you know, get beat to near the point of death but are simply beat, stay quiet, don't ask for help, because they've been told, well, you're the criminal, you're a seller, no one's going to believe you, and it's very hard to ask for help. But It's a very common myth that we believe, that women choose this. The kid's 12 years old on average. That's her first exposure into this. These women and children are raised to be exploited, are raised to be abused. That's all they've been taught. There's no choice in this for them. You can just see the trauma and um, the sense of being lost in their eyes. I was nine months pregnant. I'd start over with my daughter, keep her safe, give her what she needs, and spend time with her so that I'd never have to worry about her getting her self-worth from someone else. She'd never feel alone or unloved because I'd be there for her through it all. I'd reach out to my mom, I'd finish school, pick up where I left off. I could still be a nurse. I love helping those who hurt. I could. No! Stop! Ah! Engine 18, rescue 18. Unknown problem. Person down. This dispatch is for engine 18 and rescue 18. Responding to a Bravo level man down. Engine 18, copy dispatch, horn route. Rescue 18, copy route. We have a report of a female down in the wash just north of 700 East Flamingo. Metro already on tank. Pump pulse, start CPR. Rescue 18, this is Memorial Hospital. Go ahead with your telemetry. Rescue 18, in route with female. ACLS has been given. Patient's nine months pregnant. We show some bruising and abrasions around the neck. We're about 10 minutes out. We have calls such as this and uh, calls where uh, 
we have a mother who may be pregnant and uh, and death is the result. This is the worst of the worst. You know, our whole entire mission is to save lives. And in this case, where you lose a mother and a child, uh, we weren't able to achieve our mission. Uh, we want to do as much as we can to take something from those situations and uh, apply them to our outreach, our education efforts, uh, so that we might not ever have to experience that again. Because of what we are seeing here in our community, particularly as it impacts our kids, uh, we wanted to make uh, send a clear message that uh, particularly here in the state of Nevada, uh, if you're going to come in to this state um, and try to exploit any of our kids, um, there's severe consequences with that. The law of the land has changed. Uh, in the past, uh, people could come into Las Vegas and they would engage in this sex trafficking behavior and not really get punished to a point that would deter them. Well, that's changed now. During the last legislative session, uh, through a comprehensive community and statewide support, we passed AB 67, which for the first time in the state of Nevada, creates the crime of sex trafficking. It's now people that uh, pander and engage in sex trafficking uh, will be punished and will be punished with sentences like life in prison. We're very concerned about what we were seeing here. And so that's part of what the new law does. And the word's going to get out that if you engage in that kind of behavior in Nevada, you're going to be prosecuted and the key is going to be thrown away. So the message is clear. Do not engage in sex trafficking. Do not get young children and victimize them and make them prostitutes because our police agencies are being very aggressive. By going through uh, methods through the IRS uh, in attacking these individuals through tax evasion, or through money laundering uh, offenses. Pimps like to have a lot of toys. Uh, we could take those toys. Uh, we can take their money, as well as cars, uh, as well as houses, as well as other things that they've gone ahead and invested their money in. Clearly, we have, as a society, taken a very dim look upon people who are going to exploit our children and exploit our girls for monetary value. You're looking at spending the rest of your life in prison if that's the life you choose. Up here in Reno, we specifically put operations together targeting the exploiter. We surround a motel when we order up a girl and we wait to see who drops her off and that's who we're going after. There is nothing that this city won't do to make sure that human trafficking stops. And certainly when it comes to our children, we want them safe, we want them staying in school, we want them to become productive members of society and continue to build this fabulous city. We will not tolerate sex trafficking at all. The key to preventing future human trafficking, but especially in taking care of the victims that are associated with this is absolutely partnerships and, and collaboration, coalition building, things of that nature. And it doesn't just have to be with law enforcement or with legal representatives, lawmakers like myself. We're looking at the religious communities. We're looking at other organizations that are out there, simply nonprofits that are simply there to take care of people. Our churches, our faith leaders play a integral role in providing that community support. So if, if young people are being abused or, or trafficked, um, they can come to a church and know that that's a safe place and that that pastor will connect them to the resources that they need and that they can turn their lives around no matter what they've been exposed to. You know, the, the challenge we have in this state in sex trafficking uh, moving forward um, is not enough resources. There, there's never going to be enough federal dollars to address this issue. We don't have state dollars, I will tell you that right now, or local dollars focused on that. So it really requires the community coming together and a lot of the philanthropy, people with means who want to make a difference in their community. We need to create some sort of uh, treatment for our kids and help them um, when we pull them off the streets or help the adults who are trapped in this lifestyle to get them off the streets. And I think that's where our business community can really come in to help and participate. Children don't ask to come into this world. And when we give them a fair start, when we give them a head start, and when we incorporate um, values 
in education on the front end, then it saves us millions and billions of dollars on the back end. This is a problem that I think we can all solve if we work together, if, if we educate our employees, we educate the people that, that we, are, we are close to. And this is a cause worth being a part of. This is, this is something that we should all be working against. So that's why Truckers Against Trafficking was formed. Uh, the government needs assistance uh, from the entire community so that we are able to work together uh, be that the nonprofit organizations, uh, be that the service organizations, be that the churches, be that the schools, be that all those that can contribute and do contribute to the community working together is what we need in order to try to combat, successfully combat this problem. Can we make a difference? I believe we can. If we can begin in our homes, putting value in our marriages, value on our children, because if we don't value them, Value is going to be replaced by something. It'll be replaced by vulnerability. Children of the Night has rescued over 10,000 children, American children, from prostitution right here in the United States in the last 35 years. What's required in order to help these children is someone to see these children for who they are, that they're children, that they're not sex objects, and they're children that, that require the same level of care as blind children, crippled children, developmentally disabled children. Not fun, nothing sexy about that, but does that work? It's the only thing that works. My story, all of it true, ends here. Protect them. Love them. Give them the chance to live their dream. Lost on crowded city streets Our wounded children weep We can hear your cries Thank you, Nevada, for coming together to protect one another. I invite you to partner with us. Young person, parent, pastor, family, and friends, join us at trafficnomore.org. Keep your warm with a brand new start. You will heal your wounded. Thank you for watching. Please join the Children's Advocacy Alliance and our partners to combat human sex trafficking in Nevada. Know the signs, talk to your children, and get involved. The state of Nevada will never be better than the state of its children. Hope Christian Health Center is humbled to stand with the community regarding this very important cause. It is up to all of us to make a difference.